everybody can hear me, but basically today what we're going to do is just show you over the new machines that are come in for 2015. Um, basically, um, I'm not going to bore you with you know, heaps of pressures and whatever else pumps do. I will show you an overview in here of what each pump does. So if you have any issues, you can check in there first to see if there's loose hoses or whatever else may be the cause of something. Um, also, uh, we'll show you some differences between this machine and possibly the, the ones that you own now. Uh, in particular, the service intervals on your rear hubs, your drive hubs, uh, they're 100 hours now. Uh, they used to be 250, but they're recommended from the, from the factory now. They will be a 100 hour service, okay? Uh, they're a different setup to some of the older hubs that are in the other harvesters, and that's, that's why we've, John Deere have said that we have to change the service intervals on them, okay? Um, feel free to ask any questions. As I said, any of the experienced ones, I think Craig Keating's got a 2013, so that'll be probably the closest to, or well, 214, sorry, yeah. Uh, that'll be the closest to this machine. So you've probably had a bit of experience with the command center and everything else, have you? All right, your driver, no worries, all right. Well, what I'll do, I'll get started inside here now. Basically, I class this as the right-hand door because as you're sitting in the cab, it's underneath your right-hand side, okay? Like I said, I'm not gonna bore you too much with it. Uh, in here, we have our right-hand drive pump, a left-hand drive pump at the back. And if you wanna come up and have a closer look, please do so. I'm, I'm, I know I'm a big bloke, but I'm not blocking it totally, I hope, so. Um, then we've also got a six bank block over there. And I'll just open my books so I don't make a mistake. Uh, the six bank block basically does um, elevator swing, left hand crop divider, right hand crop divider, primary extractor slew, um, top of boom and base cutter lift. So that's all up in this section over here. So any issues that you may have or any uh, faults that may occur up in your, on your screen, uh, to do with those areas, that would be the first place to have a look. I would, I would uh, every day when you clean down, make sure you do get in here and have a good look through. Make sure if there's any leaks or anything like that, if it's just a loose nut or something on a hose. With new machines, you will get vibration and hoses will come loose. Uh, a loose connection is not a warranty issue, it's a maintenance issue. Um, so you need to check these daily when you do your blow down for your, for your uh, end of end of uh, operation uh, each day. Uh, going on to the, uh, the rest of the pumps, basically uh, elevator, elevator, feed roller and knockdown uh, controlled in here. The back right, so back right, right behind over here, there's another big pump over the back there. Basically, we've got um, topper and cooling fan and stuff in there as well. Uh, that gold block up there, that's a release valve for your uh, hydraulics. Uh, any work that you do uh, on your hydraulics, please remember this is a release, pressure release valve. Do that before you touch anything on your hydraulics because your hydraulics are under pressure even when the machine's turned off, okay? So rather than hurt yourself, uh, just be aware of that. I can give you a more of a rundown in here. We've actually got little booklets that we're gonna give you uh, that have a breakdown of all the pumps and everything in here. Some of the other things to look forward to or look for, basically is a isolator battery switch, okay? You jump start for your machine, don't jump directly off your battery, which is just up there. Always use your jumps here. Um, something that the new guys may find a problem finding uh, will be your engine drain hose and your main drive uh, pump uh, drain hose as well, okay? Uh, they're hidden up here, tucked away up here. Uh, down here, you'll see there's a sight glass for the base cutter unit. Um, the fill point for that is just in underneath this flap. So it's a bit hard to get to today, but uh, yeah, get in there. Uh, safety issues, uh, when you do any work on your base cutters and you've got your machine jacked up, please pull the pins out and slot these down. That will stop the machine coming down on top of you. So vitally important that you do follow the safety um, rules and uh, not kill anybody, please. 
So, <laughs> uh, tracks, basically tension, uh, I think we've got one person that's got a wheel machine here. Yeah, okay. Uh, so tracks, these work on a, uh, a grease uh, tensioner. The tensioner is just down inside here. Um, with the soil conditions, you may need to adjust your actual track tension, okay? Again, that'll be day by day or field by field. However, you might go from a really hard clay to a soft sand, then you'll need to do some adjustments. If you need to release tension, you just back off that nut and that releases the pressure out of there. Uh, if you need to adjust it to tighten, you just pump a few pumps of grease in until you get roughly about two and a half inches between here and the bottom of your track. So, or two and a quarter inches, sorry. Um, next, we have, uh, this is our um, billet, uh, billet adjuster, size adjuster is in here, as well as uh, another pump that runs a few other items on the machine. Uh, you have an adjuster just here, it's pretty hard to see, but please, when we get further along, come and have a look through the machine. Um, so yeah, you can adjust here. This, this machine, I think most of our machines this year have got 10 blade chops in them. I think there may be a one, one machine, Craya Graham Blackburns is an eight blade, I think, off the top of my head. Um, also along here, you will see that we have uh, the roller, the feed roller sections all the way up through here. Each one of them has a grease nipple on. Grease on your machine, anything that's got a grease nipple on it, basically every 25 hours it should be greased. Okay, I'll show you more uh, base cutters, uh, legs in particular. They're a little bit hard to get to and some people don't even know they're there, but they are on the base cutter legs as well. So moving forward or backwards, <laughs> uh, we have the fill point for your tank, for your hydraulic tank. Um, like I said, when you go to fill it, still release your pressure because it is a sealed unit and without that there you'll find it very hard to pump oil into your into your system uh, off the top of my head i think it's 1500 hours before you need to do the oil change and filters in these things so um, yeah but remember you've got to get that little release valve off otherwise it just won't uh, fill up next we move on to our chopper area all in here Basically, that's your, your drive motor for your chopper. In behind here, I call it a barbecue plate. Uh, depending on how you have your uh, uh, choppers set, uh, if they're set fairly tight, you will find that will get pretty hot and uh, by morning tea, you'll be able to cook your breakfast on it. So a lot of guys pull that off. Um, uh, I guess the factory would recommend that you would leave it on, but a lot of guys do get rid of it to make it easier when they need to adjust their choppers. Um, in, the, in your operator's manual, it shows you how to actually go through and adjust your choppers to the correct pressures that you need. Um, with the 10 blade chop too, it will be slightly different to when you had an eight blade chop, just so you know. Um, down here, like I said before, final drives, 100 hour services, okay? So next we move into, and stop me if I'm going too fast. Put your hand up and ask, it's fine. Um, next we'll move into the pivot point on your elevator. In here, there's actually nine areas in there that need grease. So every 25 hours, <laughs> vitally important that you keep the grease up to these because they're down low, get into a lot of the dirt, and uh, if they're dry, they'll start wearing your, your pivot pin and all your joints in there. Uh, and then maintenance will become a major issue rather than just a, a maintenance issue. Uh, again, on the elevator, you'll see that there are points along here that do need greasing. Up there in particular, uh, you'll see like a little uh, shock absorber uh, where the motor comes out and the two hoses are going up. That's actually to keep your tension on your uh, elevator chain. With your elevator chain, we sort of recommend that you can get uh, a reduction of two links out of the system. Once that third link's ready to be cut out, you'll need to get a new chain. Uh, tension on these, again, different operators will have different tensions on their elevator chains. So, this one's set like that. The best way to do this is to make sure that your flights are not hammering against the, uh, the frame of your machine, basically. If you have it too loose, 
you'll hear it. It'll be banging and rattling a lot louder than under normal operations. Um, your slew, basically your, your motor up there drives your, your main uh, hood around. Um, also, I think there's another motor up there that runs all your bin flap, uh, your secondary hood adjuster on there. And then that's about it on this side of the machine. Uh, they have added another pump or motor up there for the cooler. Um, we did have an issue a uh, couple of years running uh, where the uh, hydraulic oil was uh, overheating, but they've fixed that issue now. Um, and uh, yeah, it seems to be working quite well. Probably the main thing that was uh, causing some of the issues that customers had was that the reverse fan does automatically come on, uh, but you can override that and put it on any time you wish. So if you're in a, I think it was two years ago, we had flowers like you would not believe. Um, rather than wait for the machine to actually do its automatic reverse cycle, um, watch your temperature gauge. If it gets into the red, then you can hit the fan, watch the temperature gauge come down. If that temperature gauge doesn't come down after a while, at the end of your row, get out of the cab, go around and clean the screen because nine times out of 10, that is the issue that we had with the machines. The, the, the operator did want to get out of his nice air conditioned cab and uh, yeah, let the, let the machine suffer. So any questions on this side of the machine? Uh, if I can't answer it, I've got my expert standing over here, uh, Blair. Uh, so yeah, please, by, by all means, uh, ask questions yell at me if I've said something wrong, uh, but yeah. And if not, then we're going to head over to the Blackburns machine and go down the left-hand side of the machine. Alrighty. So basically we'll start off at the elevator again. Um, again, you will see some grease points along here that need to be done, mainly on the pivot points here, and there's some down over on this side here. You've got your sill roller, your choppers are inside, your uh, exhaust fan, which is uh, a variable speed, uh, which is done by the command center inside the machine. Um, we will go through that once we've been through the slide presentation up there. Uh, in behind here, a lot of the older machines didn't have these guards, but they actually protect your air filter. Um, when you're backing up into cane and things like that, this helps protect the clips that go around the air filter. Uh, and stop them from being snapped off and having to re replace a whole lid. Um, also, just up here, grease points, you'll see there's a little bank up there. I think there's about eight or nine up there that need to be greased. So again, you can do that from up on top here and coming across, it's probably the safest point. Make sure your machine's turned off and nobody's gonna turn the uh, main hood around on you. Uh, here you will see the bearings are different on the choppers now as well. They're more um, like a Zamet type bearing. I think you guys would probably be uh, aware of the difference between what John Deere used to give us and what uh, we could get aftermarket. Um, they're a lot easier to look after. There's a single grease point on them. So you just pump in the grease like you would on a normal uh, bearing. Again, all the way along your, your feed rollers, you have grease, grease nipples on basically every point that needs it. Uh, again, they're 25 hours. All right, so how many hours for this? 100? We owe you a prize, Greg, all right? So yes, I can give things away as well, so you better listen. <laughs> so um, another thing the people that haven't had a new machine will notice, we now have a poly tank for a fuel tank, okay? I think off the top of my head, it's about 625 litres. Um, so uh, it has made the machine a little bit lighter, which is good uh, for compaction. Um, and from all, ac all accounts, the people that have had the machines since 2012, I think they came out. Um, I think we've had one issue where a track snapped and broke the bottom tap off the, the bottom of the tank. But other than that, we've had no issues with it. It's been pretty good. I don't know what you... Think, Graham, you've been happy with it, yeah? 
Okay. So um, now cooling tower. I might get Dave wherever you are to no, Dave's not here. Okay. I don't know. Pete. Just need to get those clips undone and fold that out so they can see how that operates. It's probably the same as most of the machines that you've had before. Some of the people that have had older machines have actually upgraded to the reversing fans on their, on their older machines anyhow. Um, yep. Just lift it yeah, straight up like that. So, like I said, if you find that uh, the reverse fan is not doing its job because it's clogged up in there, physically get out of the cab, have a look at your screens. If they're dirty, get in there and give them a good clean out. If you use compressed air, be very careful around the fins of your radiators in there. Uh, you're better off blowing back that way out of the screen. Uh, always blow the opposite way that the air goes into something. That way you're blowing the, the, the gear out away from it rather than back into your system and squashing it in tighter, which will block up the holes and therefore give you a poor circulation of air. On the bottom one there, uh, as f no, it's only the, none of them do it, I think. Oh yeah, so, yep, yeah, so, see, thank you very much for that, thank you. So yeah, um, I'm learning about these two because there are some differences on these ones. So, um, next, uh, basically, extinguisher. We have our um, air intake. Um, then we get into the engine side of the, I guess the beast, you can call it. Um, it's uh, oil filler just over here for it. You've got your wash bottle for your, your, your windscreen. Um, you've also got um, your primary fuel filter in the door. You've got a further two fuel filters on your engine on the left hand side of the engine as you look at it. And they're just directly behind the oil filter for the engine as well. So if you need to have a look, it's just straight down in here. You've got a dipstick here that you can check your oil level for your engine. And as I said before, your drain point for your engine oil is over underneath the left hand, uh, right hand side door. So here we have something that's probably not been on uh, a lot of the older machines. This actually drives your contour fronts. So your automatic uh, base cutter, height control and your automatic uh, crop divider control. Um, this section up here is what controls the, the whiz-bang uh, con contour fronts on these harvesters. So um, um, now also down here you will see that there is a jack. This is for jacking your cab up. Uh, if you need to get in and do work on your engine uh, or get in and give it a really good clean down at the end of the season. Basically, you would pull your little um, tutor here, I call it, like a train horn. Uh, there's a pin in there you need to pull out first. Pull that. There's a stick just inside the door here that you put into the jack, jack it up. Once you've got it up, and sorry, before you do that, make sure there's nothing on the floor of the cab. No spanners, no lunch boxes, anything that could fall forward and smash your windscreen. Your windscreen on these is worth about $6,000, so it is an expensive mistake if you, if you forget to actually clean your cab out. So um, it, it's happened in trucks, I know it's happened in trucks, and I'm sure it's happened to somebody, but they just don't want to admit it. So, uh, um, so yeah, once you've jacked it up, to release this, you switch this around to the other side, so that way, and then jack it down. It won't actually just come down automatically. You actually physically have to jack it down. But just remember to actually switch that to the opposite side, okay? One other important thing that I almost bypassed, we have a fuel switch in here. This cuts off the supply of your fuel to your engine, okay? Just in behind that, people don't realize, but there is a little uh, screen or filter in there as well. Uh, at the end of, I think it's a thousand hours on this, um, get in there and get that screen out and clean it out as well because it does hold, uh, I guess, debris, you could call it, that's been in your tank, okay? So it will, after a while, if it fills up and blocks up, it'll restrict the flow of your fuel to the engine and that's it, you won't be going anywhere, so, yeah. Uh, any questions? 
Have I bored you long enough yet or not? So, um, the cab, obviously, uh, we'll go through that later. Uh, one thing about the cab, very much like your um, fan housing up there, keep a clean cab. Um, people that have dirty, dusty cabs, it will start affecting the air conditioning uh, performance in these. Uh, it needs to be kept tidy up there, dust as much dust free as you can. I know it's hard in some areas, but that will keep your filters clean and your air conditioning will, will work um, at its optimum level. So, um, down here, again, we have another safety feature for when you're jacking up, getting under to do your um, uh, base cutter blades and changing them. Also accumulators. The workshop this year have actually uh, pumped in 700 pound of pressure in these. We found that was a, a fairly uh, good level to have for most uh, conditions that our guys around this area operate on. Uh, doesn't make it too hard, doesn't make it too soft. It's a good, good uh, compromise, I would say. Um, also down here, because of the new fronts that we have on here, this little arm uh, leads to the sensor, the pressure sensor that, that actually helps activate the automatic uh, operation of your crop dividers and your base cutter. Um, on your screen up in the cab and on the slide show, it will show you um, a picture of the, the screenshot for that. Um, again, it will jump into the red every now and again, but what that's doing is once it feels the pressure, it will then adjust and start working with the ground. Um, again, the boys have set the pressures in the um, machine to suit probably a, a, a combination of the areas around here. You may have to adjust it. And when we get into the cab, we'll show you where to go to do all those adjustments of pressures to make it work better in your area. Um, the front end basically has stayed the same. Outer scroll, inner scroll, your side knives, um, grease points to remember, there's one down in here, there's one in the back of here as well. Uh, none up on the top that you have to worry about. Uh, from there, basically we go in to the front of the machine, which is slightly different to uh, some of the older ones as well. No, I'm right. With the fronts on these, they have changed the width, uh, not by much, but it is a little bit wider than the old ones used to be. You'll also see these protector skids down here have changed shape. They're a bit smaller. They've been cut down so they don't actually go get jammed up when you go through a divot uh, and lock up, up behind your um, knockdown roller. Uh, they've changed the shape of that so that doesn't happen anymore. Um, they've actually reinforced it as well and put an extra bar along it this year as well. So in underneath, like I said, your base cutters are down there. On each of those legs, there's actually three outlets. There's an oil drain at the top. In the middle is your grease uh, release valve and underneath that is your grease nipple. Um, in between your two base cutter legs is your actual drain plug for your base cutter uh, box. So uh, it's hard to see, so you will need to get under the machine to actually see it and, and use it. Uh, topper, again, if you're working on it, put the safety thing down so it doesn't come down and knock you on the head, okay? Um, up here, your knives. If you lose a knife off your uh, topper, replace it pretty well straight away because when one of those blades comes off, it chucks the balance out of the topper. Therefore, you're getting extra wear on your bearings and you'll end up having to replace your bearings a lot quicker than you normally would. So if you find at the end of the day you've lost a blade or at lunchtime, please put a new one on and replace it. Just keeps the balance and you'll find your machine will run a lot smoother. Some guys don't use their topper that often, but when you do need it, it's good to know that it's gonna work properly and not cause you any issues because there's a couple of knives missing off it. I'm just trying to save you money, so think of it that way. I know, I should pat myself on the back, hang on. Uh, so uh, this one we've also just for today just stuck up a um, receiver on it. Um, that's how it would look if you did get guidance for the machine. Uh, basically that's all we'd have to do to it. The command center will actually run AMS gear. Um, 
you can put an extra screen in if you want to have a different screen as well as your normal command center in there. But uh, yeah, other than that, I think I've pretty well covered it. Uh, any questions? No? Um, we will be coming out when we deliver the machines, going over all of this. Today, when we get in the cab, we won't be able to actually start the engines. Uh, we can turn the key on so we can actually get the command center up and open. So we can show you through the screens, how to get to them. Uh, on the day of delivery, like I said, we'll go through one of us, either a salesman or uh, Blair and a salesman will come out to you, uh, go over the machine with you, take you for a bit of a test run. Then when you actually start your harvest, one of the salesmen will be in the cab with you until you feel comfortable. Some guys might kick us out after half an hour, other guys might want us there all day. That will be purely up to you guys and how you feel, how, how, how good your confidence is with the machine. As I said, the, the guys that have had the older machines that haven't had a command center may find it a little bit daunting at first, but after a while, that little command center will take a lot of pressure off the old noggin and you'll feel a lot better at the end of a day where you don't have to worry about things. Automatic fronts, uh, your command center will just leave you enough or a little bit more time to actually concentrate on where your haul out is, what he's doing, rather than concentrating on where your base cutter is, whether you're digging ground or not. That machine set up properly, you won't have to worry about what you're doing with your cuts. Once you've got it set up properly, it will do the cut for you, okay? So yeah, that's it for me. I think we've got to go up to the uh, wash bay shed now with Dave and Blair.